Welcome to another episode with your host, Robert E. Hansen, psychic medium, author, and public speaker. Hi, welcome back. Today we're talking about what is clairsentience. All human animals, and most animals on a higher level of development, have an emotional reaction to their environment, to situations, to struggles, to challenges, expressions of love, expressions of fear. We all have, in a lifetime span, various roads in and out of this emotional window. The word clear, or clair, comes from the French. It means to be clear about something. Clear, clear. No interruptions, no distractions, absolutely clear, like clear sailing. There's no storms on the horizon, there's no waves in our way. Our sailing is clear, right? So when someone is experiencing a clairsentient expression of consciousness, when certain psychics, certain mediums, certain people that work in spiritual craft are speaking about a clairsentient experience, what they are pointing to, what they are kind of suggesting, is that through them, through them, they are having another set of feelings and emotions not directly connected to them. Not directly connected to them. There will be similar experiences that have been shared, right? This is known as identification. If someone has, let's say, the death of a brother who uh, died uh, in a gunshot with somebody, that carries with it a very serious sense of sentient energy. Not only is there a death involved, but unfortunately there is a death due to uh, murder or harm, right? There's a physical violent act that interrupted the soul of the loved one called the brother. If another brother passes away uh, through an extended form of cancer, they've gone through all kinds of treatment protocols and it, nothing really seemed to work, and at the end of the day, they wound up dying. Yes, you have two different families, both who have experienced the death of someone they love very much. Both have lost their brothers in some particular way. One died with family around, and there was this cancer thing going on, and it was a very sad and heartbreaking moments, and people cried, and people wept, and there was a great sense of sorrow. However, contrasted to somebody that had a brother that was murdered, or someone who was shot, and it was a very unexpected death, and it caught everybody by surprise, and no one expected the, a burglar to break in the house and shoot somebody, or something like that. Of course, that carries the emotions of being sad and being sorrowful, but at the same token, it also carries anger, rage, fear, uh, revenge sometimes comes through the system, and there's a completely separate set of emotional reactions and emotional responses, right? Um, when someone crosses over, you know, under normal, quote, normal conditions, health or old age or something, uh, people to some degree could be angry with the universe. They might say God did this or God did that. But fundamentally, they're pretty much at peace with it, saying we knew he was sick for a long time and we will miss him terribly and we will honor him every year. We'll light candles, whatever you do. And our emotions and our feelings about it are sad, but it's something we saw coming because he's been sick for such a long time. And then when you have the other side of the coin, where someone's been murdered and they were, you saw them in the morning and said goodbye to them, and you spoke to them a half hour later on their cell phone, and then 10 minutes after that, they're no longer existing on earth. Uh, you know, their body has been shot, and the next thing you know, they're in the morgue. That generates a whole, whole another set of situations and a whole another set of reactions, right? That changes everything. So... In certain cases, the sentient feeling that is suggested by certain psychics and certain mediums are kind of broad brushstroke. And I'm not criticizing them, but the brushstroke can be very wide-based, right? It could be very wide-based. So one of the first things that has to occur, if you're working in clairsentient work, if you are experiencing clairsentient expressions of consciousness, if something is occurring within you that suggests or hints that you're having a clairsentient rising within you, like some kind of flowering process is taking place, and you are deeply moved by emotion, you are deeply moved. Some people even refer to this as have, um, an empathic reaction. They have like this deep empathy for somebody. 
uh, that has to be really, really honed and developed because it's a very, very powerful uh, psychic gift. However, there has to be some guidance in this, and that's what I'd like to try to address a little bit. When you're sitting with someone as a sitter, if you're sitting with somebody who's reading, if you're sitting with someone that is suggesting to you they have insight into the emotional system of the family, there are a few things that have to be taken into account. One, for the person suggesting this, for the person that says, I am clairsentient, I have this power, I have this capacity to feel these deep emotions, which is really a true experience for some people. It really is authentic. Um, the one thing they must do, and the one thing they must be very, very mindful of, aware of, especially if you're practicing, is you have to know how you are feeling yourself. Have you taken a full inventory? Have you taken a full stock and trade of how you feel? Not just ever, but in that moment of the session, you know, if you have uh, had an, a big uh, argument with someone in your family, let's say you had a big falling out with your sister an hour before you're supposed to go to do your work as, and meet a client, right? And you had a big blow up over uh, someone being late for dinner and you're really irritated by it, but you have an appointment to see somebody and you sit down across from them and you suggest that you have the sentient capacity right as part of your reading process and that one of the first few moments that you start reading you're complaining about somebody who was late for dinner and the guest goes i'm not sure what you're talking about and then you realize you're talking about you in other words you haven't set aside your own stuff your own stuff is still in the reading thus the stuffing that which is filling you right so if you are filled with your own stuff if you're filled with your own reactions to the memories of the past, if you're still full of your own anxieties and fears, and then you sit down to read somebody, how are you supposed to separate it? They become almost impossible to separate. And what happens is the guest winds up getting an altered version of what should really be getting received, which is clear channel information, complete accuracy, as compared to getting a quasi sense of something, where someone says, did you ever get upset with your sister? Well, or your brother, of course you have over time, if you have one, right? It's not uncommon, right, for people to get upset. But if that becomes something that you carry with you, like you're carrying a weight on your shoulder, and you bring that into a reading session, two things are happening here. One, you're not being authentic with them, and they themselves are not getting the right information being given back to them. So one of the ground rules of all clear work whether it be clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairaliant, whether we're talking about clairsentient right now, it, that the energy connected to all the emotional fields, the fields of movement, of anxiety, fear, worry, joy, happiness, love, compassion, mm -hmm. uh, all of those fields of work will flow through any human. Any human carries these things. They count through all human people. However, in the midst of a session, when the channel is clear, when the sitting psychic is clear and their own emotions have been set to the side, they can see that what they are talking about is their stuff and now they're receiving your stuff, right? Then they, what I call, they lean forward and really start to express it. Now, I'll give you a very, very fast story of what I mean, okay? I'll keep it depersonalized. I never mentioned personalities here, but I'll give you something that will kind of help you out. I had a family come to see me not too long ago. And I'm sitting in a very nice place. I was relaxed. I came into my office. And uh, the parents sit down. The family sat down. And I'm doing this reading. And it turned out that they, a mother had passed on. Right? The mother had passed on. Not the, the parents. The, mother, the father and mother were there. But the mother, the grandmother of the kids, the mother's mom, had died. And I, I saw it and I explained how it happened. And she goes, that's right, my mother did have this, my mother did have that. That's what's happening. And all of a sudden, I went from this really nice, relaxed feeling to like, oh, my God, holy mackerel, do I feel a certain way. I felt angry. I felt embarrassed. I felt aggressive. I felt irritated all in one flood, boom, like this. And then through a combination of that emotion and what I was seeing, I said to the sister, the, to the wife, I said, uh, I'm being, you know, about your mom, with my respect, your mom is crossed, but there's an expression of this sentient push in this reading, 
And unless I misunderstand this, do you have two brothers? Or I'm being told you have two brothers. And the woman said, yes, I do have two brothers. That's true. And I said, not like this. I said that your brothers have an altercation, a fist fight, right inside the funeral parlor, just feet away from the casket of your mother. And their eyeballs popped open like this. And they said, yes, they had a full-blown fist fight in front of my mother's casket. And I said, because it's coming across to me, the feeling I'm getting, the sense I'm getting, is that one brother did all the work, and the other brother only showed up at this funeral to find out what money was left behind so we could get some of the will or the uh, pieces of jewelry or the wristwatch or something that's in the house. And the sister, the mother that was sitting there said, oh my God, that's absolutely true. My one brother was taking care of my mom constantly. He would call my other brother to ask for help. My other brother never really would show up and make an excuse. My mother passes away, the other brother shows up, and my other brother saw him, say, what the hell are you doing here? You never cared about mommy before. Well, I want to have, you know, I want to say my goodbyes, and when are we seeing the lawyer? And all hell broke loose. All hell broke loose, and off they went, and hitting and punching and kicking each other, the chairs are falling over, and the funeral parlor had to stop the whole thing, and off and outside they go. And, of course, this energy carried off not only to the end of the funeral service, but also went off to the cemetery where one brother never even showed up and the other brother was standing there smoldering and seething with, this, with just anger. And when I described that to them, they said that's exactly what happened. Now, fortunately in my own family, thank goodness, I never had anything like that. I mean, that's a pretty rough story to share, and that, but I think it punctuates what I'm trying to tell you. Is that not, is not just... I feel sad, or I feel bad, or I can tell someone got nervous. You know, these are very highly generic comments, and on any given day, anybody can feel sad, or mad, or upset, or angry. I mean, we all go through it. Give me a break. Every human animal goes through it at some point or another, especially when there's death around, right? I mean, when there's suffering, it really amps the stuff up. However, in this particular case, it was honed very specifically for the sitting family by the mother that died, because she was the one that was using me as a channel or an interpreter for what she witnessed from the casket. As a soul, as a soul, she witnessed her own children fighting with each other physically, but the fight was the result of the sentient energy of this great anger and jealousy and vindictiveness, vindictiveness with her kids. And the mother saw it, so that I was asked the question, does this make my mother upset? And on one level, I said, yes, it does. I mean, if your mother is witnessing her children fighting like that and having that kind of anger and that kind of rage and expressing it with no boundaries in front of her casket right after she died, within days of her death, they're going to war with each other. In the world of men and women, yeah, she would be extremely upset. As a soul, she is free from that bondage, though. She witnesses it with compassion. She understands now from another perspective that humans act like this, but the souls transcend this. They call it transcending the world. And they are able to receive it, express it, share it, without it touching them or harming them or hurting them. It doesn't carry that weight. It's almost as though the expression... Uh, father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing, comes into play. Meaning that the mother's soul is beyond being damaged by that, beyond being hurt like that. Therefore, she will pray for her children to come to peace and to come to know that this is all just madness and not to worry about it, that she is at rest and that she would want her children to reunite and be one loving family, which is what I think most good parents would love to do. And when I shared this with the family, you know, not only were they crying and very appreciative, which is nothing to do with me, really appreciate their mother coming through. They said, Robert, no one knew the emotions that day like that. I mean, you're not talking about a physical phenomena or what you heard a name or something. They said, this defines exactly, exactly what happened that particular day. And it has nothing to do with me as far as my family have any of that. I have no reference to that. But in the reading, because... I became open and clear, 
I can understand it and see it clearly before the family that was sitting in front of me. So this, my friends, is a very, very good classic example of what uh, a clairsentient energy, a clairsentient feeling is like. It carries with it this weight of, um, of accuracy. It, it, it pulls on this weight of being accurate and clear and concise. And it has to come through a screening process where there is no deflection, no side stops, no nothing to describe what is occurring within the reading field. So if you're working in clairsentient work, if you feel you're a clairsentient, which is a very high gift, it requires great grounding. There's a lot of emotion in it. There's love in it. There's fear in it. There's anxiety in it. There's great joy in it. It is an extremely beautiful part of psychic work, but it carries a lot of weight. And that weight is not intended for everybody. When there's a lot of sorrow, when there's the death with respect, when there's the death of a young child, the grief can be palpable. You can almost taste it in your mouth. The hurt, the wounding is so severe. You have to be ready for that stuff. And that is not easy to do unless the gift is really within you. And then coming with that gift comes the ability to have compassion, not only for the people you're reading, but for yourself. Because once it comes through, it has to be released back as an offering to the souls. You can't carry that weight if you're going to service people as a psychic medium, as working in this craft of healing people. You can't carry the weight. You do one or two readings, you're going to want to go home and just give up because there's too much to bear. There's too much sorrow. And there's also a tremendous amount of joy in healing, which is what pulls guys like me and other people like me to do this work for folks just like you guys. Okay, so this is what clairsentient is all about. I hope it gives you a little insight into what clairsentient work implies and suggests and invokes. And um, thanks for tuning in.